What's going on, ladies and gentlemen? Thank you so much for tuning in. It's me, Mikey Pipes. TGIF, ladies and gentlemen. Thank God it's Friday. Today is Friday, February 16th, 2024. A little uh, after 7.30 in the morning. We're heading to our first service call of this glorious Friday. We're heading to a an existing customer that we established a new relationship with last Friday. They live in the hamlet of Wantaw. Wantaw is on the south shore of Nassau County on Long Island in the great state of New York. Right now, uh, we're just taking a little shortcut. We're passing by um, good old Rocco. This is Rocco's place from RSM Contracting, custom home building. Rocco, good old Rocco. Um, we're going to a this this existing customer. He happens to be, and God bless him. God bless him and his family. He's one of the few. He's one of the few that exist among us. He is a New York City firefighter. God bless our first responders. God bless our first responders. I gotta tell you, if it wasn't for the great men and women in our law enforcement, our firefighting, our healthcare, even our corrections, God knows what this planet would look like. Now granted, it's not the greatest, not the greatest of shape, <laughs> that's for sure, but God bless our first responders. All right, ladies and gentlemen, so we're heading to Wantaw. Right now I am eastbound on Route 27 in the village of Rockville Center, Route 27, also known as Sunrise Highway. Uh, what's incredible about the family that we're going to right now in Wantaw is that the husband, the father of this family, he is one of New York's bravest. He is a New York City firefighter. Now, in New York City, we have the finest, which is the police department, the great men in blue. We have the bravest, right, which is our firefighting family. We have the best, which is New York City's EMS team and family. And let's not forget New York City's boldest, the amazing men and women in New York City's correction department. God, I got to tell you, all four of these very special groups are holding New York City together. I'm kidding you not. Just keeping it real. Here we are. We're working on this hydronic heating system. Not the burner. Pipe Doctor Home Services does not service any oil equipment. Given that said, we have a short on... Where is the wire? We have a short on this wire right here. All right, this wire is going to our second floor thermostat and connect to our second floor zone valve. We have a break in the wire. We're gonna run a new wire today. From the basement, across the ceiling, 
up the first floor and to the second floor. Let me show you how we do it. All right, let's see what we can see there. The wire is, <laughs> is there. See that wire? See that wire right there? Well, uh, it's gotta go. Ooh, I got lucky. There's my wire. <laughs> use some finish nails there. There's my wire going up. Ow! Ow! Damn it. There it is. They ran it alongside. <laughs> they ran it alongside the inside of the molding. And that's why there's no play on it. Easy peasy. All right, so I put my spool of wire onto my tool bag with a giant, big, flat screwdriver, Phillips screwdriver. I put some electric tape on a piece that I found right here. Here's that other side of that. And let's try to fish this in there. Uh. <laughs> there that is. So I'm gonna come across here into the boiler room. And then we will secure it to something in here and connect to our zone valve later on. And I'll show you step by step how we do that. All right, now that our thermostat is wired, we have the red and the white wire, the red being RH terminal, the W white wire going to the W terminal. As you guys may know, um, on our low voltage control wiring at the thermostat, 24 volts incoming voltage is being fed to the R or the red wire. In this particular case, since the heating only thermostat, we're taking that 24 volt circuit incoming power to the RH terminal on our thermostat. When there's an active call for heat and the thermostat heating relay is closed, the 24 volts of being fed on RH is going to be brought over to the W terminal and that's gonna close that switch or turn on the light. When the call for heating is off, that relay, that heating relay will open and the call will stop and the switch will turn off. Let me show you what it's like at the zone valve wiring here at the boiler. All right, so here is the completed product. Um, this is a mess and this is why I don't, Pipe Doctor does not install zone valves when we install a boiler. Uh, there is no easy way of making this look pretty. Yes, I can put maybe like a 1900 box here with some offsets and feed it into from the bottom of each zone valve, uh, but no one does that. And when you're factoring the time to do that, you might as well put in circulators and it's zoning with circulators is better anyway. Anyway, um, you're gonna see that we use some Wagos here. Every work that we do, Pipe Doctor does, and we're working with electrical uh, wire nuts. We're not putting back wire nuts. We use Wagos. Uh, Wagos are just glorified, reusable um, wire connectors. Um, this one is a two conductor uh, Wago 221. This is a five conductor Wago 221. Um, here's our thermostat wire. Okay. Um, our, without without simple without confusing you or trying I'm trying to simplify things, keeping it simple. Uh, this yellow wire is containing 24 volts. 24 volts is being fed to the RH terminal on the thermostat. When the thermostat is closed, the white wire is now energized and it's going to the the rest of here, and that will close the circuit, and that will activate the blow. Um, 
the motor and you, as you can see we have no resistance the one for the basement we have resistance no resistance we have no resistance the valve is open okay once that motor energizes it pushes a little lever and it closes the end switch which allows for burner operation basically like tt we don't work with oil equipment but this is the extent of it hope you got that if not i have videos on zone valve wiring simplified on my channel just do a search and you'll see it pretty simple all right so i just went upstairs to the thermostat i turned the thermostat off there's that resistance and let's just check our other zones so first floor second floor basement they all they all have resistance let's turn on the first floor make sure that operates and then we'll turn on the basement make sure that operates you always want to triple check all your work you don't want to come back here on a recall on a saturday morning or a sunday because you messed up something first floor no resistance Okay, let's do the basement. Help me turn it on. All right, let's see what happens. Heard that click. That's that thermostat relay. Oh, here we go. Beautiful. Our boiler's not on because it's at temperature. All right, triple checking our work. Second floor, no resistance, actively calling basement resistance. First floor resistance, off, on, off. All right, another great habit of being a successful service technician. Clean up your debris and also the debris of the last guy. All right, don't leave the work area like a parts graveyard. I absolutely, I get disgusted every time I see parts, you know, just scrap stuff on the floor. It's just not professional, guys. If you're running service calls, pick up after yourself and even pick up after the last guy. All right, they are all getting hot. Look at that. Beautiful. Simply beautiful. Yes, it is. Here is the bathroom. Beautiful. Want to make sure the louvers are always open. Otherwise, you'll block convection and you won't have any heat. It'll get hot, but the room won't get hot. Very nice. Perfect. And very good. All right, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for tuning in. Really appreciate the unconditional support from the community. Let me get your thoughts and feedback down in the comments section down below. I'd like to give a special shout out to the 35 percenters. 35% of the viewers of this channel are subscribers, and I really appreciate that. So if you haven't done so already, smash that thumbs up button and consider subscribing. There's no course or obligation. And if